you, Father, for this 34th, 34th day of our 40 and 40 day fasting and prayers program. Thank you, Lord, that each and every day you sustain earth with strength and vitality. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for uh, standing with us since day one, teaching us all things, uh, showing us the way we should go. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for the scripture of this day. Esther 2, verses 16 and 17. Esther 2, 16 and 17, I read. So Esther was taken into King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the 7th year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set, he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. End of quote. This is the word of God. Father Yahweh, praise be your holy name. We glorify your holy name. Today the Lord talks to us about divine crown, divine crown. The story of Esther begins with a grand banquet at the palace of King Ahasuerus, also referred to as King Xerxes, who ruled the Medo Persian Empire, including Babylon, the land of the Israelites' captivity. The king had become drunk of wine and commanded that his wife, Queen Vashti, uh, come out before everyone to show how beautiful she was. Queen Vashti refused to be paraded before everyone. King Xerxes was so angry at her disrespect and disregard for his request that he divorced her. The king called for a nationwide a beauty beauty pageant to be held uh, to find a new beautiful queen. A Jewish woman, a Jewish girl named Esther was taken from with, with other young women up to the citadel of Susa. The citadel was called Susa. Esther's cousin, Mordecai, had taken Esther in and raised her as his own his own daughter after Esther's parents had died. A man named Agai was put in charge of preparing the women for meeting the king. Esther's beauty won her won her Agai's favor and she was given special attention. Esther was careful However, not to, to tell anyone her nationality, as Mordecai has warned her not to. When it was Esther's turn to go before the king, he immediately find, found her the most attractive and the most beautiful of all, uh, all women and placed the royal crown on her head. First leg of this scripture, Esther made queen. So Esther was taken into King Ahasuerus, uh, 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 into onto King Ahasuerus into his house royal. Uh, uh, quote. I'm quoting the first uh, sentence of the scripture of the day, so, which means into his bed, as is implied. To which it is it is not strange if she uh, saw a virtuous person did in those circumstances yield considering the infirmity of human nature and uh, of that of the infirmity of this uh, uh, weak sex and uh, the state of those times when plurality of wives was permitted and concubines concubines were own as wives and these virgins were uh, by this action made his wives and concubines. She did not return on the morrow to the house of the women as those who only became the king's concubines did 
as we see it in in verse in Esther two verse fourteen. But she was taken to be she was taken to be his wife, his principal wife, and designed for his queen, and so was retained in his in his palace and placed in an apartment suitable to the dignity she was about to be award advanced advanced onto. Besides, it is not it is not known to us whether Mordecai and Esther had not uh, no dire not direction they had not direction or uh, a dispensation uh, from Yahweh in this matter. It being certain that God can dispense with His own positive law. Tebeth, Tebeth, the word Tebeth is to be compared to the corresponding word, the corresponding Egyptian word Tobi or Tubi, which corresponded nearly to our December January period of the year. The time referred to in the verse will be the January or February of the year 478 before Christ and, and must have been very shortly after Zerxes, King Zerxes returned to Susa from the west for the, from the western campaign against the Greeks. In the 17th year of his reign, which is in this, the scripture says in the 17th year of his reign, I quote, which is in December 479 before Christ or January 478 before uh, uh, Christ, as I said, explaining Tebeth, Zaxas quitted Sardis for Susa in or soon after December uh, uh, 479 before Christ. It has been regarded as a difficulty, difficulty that uh, Vashti's, Vashti's place, Queen Vashti's place, declared vacant in 483 before Christ, I'm talking here of real history, uh, 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 declared vacant in 483 before Christ, was not supplied until the end of 479 before Christ, four years, four years afterward. Uh, and the divorce of Vashti, let, let us analyze that, the divorce of Vashti being in the third year of uh, the king's, uh, king's excess reign, it was four years before Esther was taken by him. Who, who, uh, if Esther, it may be uh, accounted for by his preparation for an engagement in war with Greece, which, which took him up all of his time. And uh, from whence he returned in the seventh year of his reign and at the beginning of it and married Esther at the close of it. So since two years out of the four had been occupied by the Grecian expedition, uh, the objection cannot be considered very weighty. And the scripture says the king loved Esther above all the women and the court the choice fell on Esther, who found favor in the eyes of Ahasuerus. He elevated her uh, to the dignity of chief wife, which is called queen. Uh, the, the other competitors had apartments assigned them in the, in the royal harem and were retained in the rank of secondary wife of, of, of concubines, of whom oriental princes uh, have a great number. Uh, he, then the scripture says, he set the royal crown upon her head. And of course, this consisted only of a purple, ra uh, of a purple ribbon, ribbon uh, uh, streaked with, with white bound around the forehead. The nuptials, this is for the customs there, the oriental customs. The nuptials were celebrated by a magnific a magnificent entertainment and in honor of the auspicious occasion, uh, it is said, I quote, he made a release of the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king, end of quote. 
the, do the dota the dotation of Persian queens consisted in consigning to them the revenue, the revenue of certain cities in various parts of the kingdom uh, for defraying their personal and uh, domestic expenditures. Some of these uh, in post the king remitted or lessened at times. So he declared Esther queen and gave her all the incense, the incense of royalty. So it was usual with the Eastern kings to put a crown or dye them on the head of their wives at the time of marriage and declare them queens. A Christian, uh, a Christian follows, who follows exactly, a Christian, a Christian follows exactly the path Esther followed up to her glory. Esther was a virgin, meaning a person who is without the blemish of sin. For once a person gives his life to Christ, which is symbolized by the water baptism, he must live a sinless life, the life of a virgin. And then, then he must go through a more or less lengthy period of beauty treatments and education, just like Esther, which corresponds to the Christian brokenness process, marked with repentance, remorse, and hatred of sin breaking down all sources of sin including self and pride up to the good result of a humble soul which is pleasing to Yahshua the king. The attributes of queen of queenly beauty Yahshua is pleased uh, of with the, the attribute of queenly beauty uh, 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 that Yahshua is pleased of are humility faith and love that is what he expects from a christian in order to put a crown on him the goal of his christian is to get married to christ the king that christ may be in him or her and him or her in christ for he says he says to the elected christian about the wedding day he says i quote at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye are in me, and I in you. End of quote. This is quoting John 14 verse 20. Now, when does when does the wedding the wedding take place during Christian life? When when the imagery and symbolism of marriage is first applied to Christ? and the body of believers known as the church. The church is comprised of those who have trusted in Yahshua Christ as their personal savior and have received eternal life. Christ, the bridegroom, has significantly, uh, uh, has, has sacrificially, sacrificially and lovingly chosen the church to be his bride. In, uh, in Ephesians, Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 27. Just as there was a, be, a betrothal, a period in biblical times which the bride and groom were separated until the wedding, so is the bride of Christ separated from her bride groom during the church age. Her responsibility during the betrothal period is to is to be faithful to him as it is said in first corinthians 11 verse 2 ephesians 5 verse 24. at the rapture the rapture the period that is called rapture it which is not clearly defined the church will be united with the bride room and the official wedding ceremony will take place and with it the eternal union of Christ and his bride will be actualized as it is said in Revelation 19 verses 7 to 9 and 21 verses 1 to 2. But it can be assumed that marriage relationship because when Christ, the scripture that I gave you, John 14, uh, said 
me in you and in you and you in me uh, 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 it can be assumed that that marriage relationship with Christ is established at the, the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire in Matthew in Matthew which is mentioned in Matthew 3 verse 11 Acts and Acts 2 and other verses the coming down and indwelling of the Holy Spirit into the Christian's spirit and soul is a marriage confirmation with, Yah with Yahweh and his son Yahshua Christ the baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the spirit of Yahweh places the believer, the believer in union in union with Christ at the moment of salvation the baptism of the Holy Spirit was predicted by uh, uh, by John the Baptist as I said in also in Mark 1 verse 8 and by Yeshua Christ before he ascended in heaven I quote him he said for John baptized with water but in a few days he will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and of quote this is quoting act 1 verse 5 this promise was fulfilled on the day of the Pentecost in Acts 2 verses 1 to 4 for the first time people were permanently indwelt with by the Holy Spirit don't be fooled don't be fooled by those who say a spirit baptism is the reality for every believer just as one faith and one father are and that all believers have had the experience of Holy Spirit baptism that is not true being identified with Christ in his death burial and resurrection through baptism of the Holy Spirit establishes the basis for realizing our separation from the power of indwelling sin and our walk in newness of life as it is said in, in Romans 6 verses 1 to 10 and Colossians 2 verse 12. This is what the Apostle says to true Christians, those baptized in and indwelled by the Holy Spirit. I quote, You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ he does not belong to Christ that's why I said uh, to be uh, end of quote end of quote this is quoting Romans 8 verse 9 that's why I say if you are not baptized uh, and uh, baptized of the Holy Spirit you are not married with Christ true believers in Yahshua Christ are the bride of Christ and wait with great anticipation for the day when they will be united eternally uh, with our bridegroom the day of rapture until then they remain faithful to him and say with all the redeemer of the Lord come I quote come Lord Yahshua end of quote in Revelation 22 verse 20 any person who is not baptized with and indwelt by the Holy Spirit is not spiritually married with Christ the next uh, sec sec section the five heavenly crowns that believers can receive in heaven the five heavenly crowns uh, that the believers can receive in heaven now when you are a Christian married to Christ you will receive a crown just like Queen Esther there are five heavenly crowns mentioned in the New Testament that will be awarded to believers they are they are the imperishable crown the crown of rejoicing the crown of righteousness the crown of glory and the crown of life which is eternal life the Greek word translated crown is Stephanos the source for the name Stephen uh, the martyr the martyr and it means it means a badge of royalty a prize in the public games 
or a symbol of honor generally generally used during the ancient Greek games it referred to a wretch or, or garland garland of leaves placed on Victor's head as a reward for winning an athletic contest as such this word is used figuratively in the New Testament as the rewards of heaven God promises those who are faithful. Paul's passage in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 25 best, best defines for us how these crimes, crimes are rewarded. First, first, the imperishable crime. The scripture says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize run in such a way that you may obtain it and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate temperate with mean disciplines uh, 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 temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crime end of quote this is a quote of first corinthians 9 verses 24 to 25. all things on this earth are subject to decay and will perish yahweh yahshua urges us uh, to not store our treasures on earth as uh, saying i quote where to on earth i quote where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and still end of quote in Matthew 6 verse 19 this is analogous to what Paul was saying about the wrath the wrath of, of, of leaves that was soon to turn brethren and, and, fall and, and fall apart but not so the heavenly crown faithful endurance wins a heavenly reward which is which is I quote an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you end of quote this is quoting first Peter 1 verse 3 verse 3 to 2 second the crown of rejoicing the scripture says for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Yahshua Christ at his coming and of course this is quoting first Thessalonians 2 verse 19 the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4 verse 4 to I quote rejoice always in the Lord and of course for all the bountiful blessings of our gracious Yahweh has showered upon us as Christians we have more in this life to rejoice about than anyone else and most some christians don't, don't even know that uh, luke tells us there is rejoicing even now in heaven in luke 15 verse 7. the crown of rejoicing will be our reward where i quote god will wipe away every tear there shall be no more death no sorrow no crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away and of course this is quoted in revelation 21 verse 4. third crown the crown of righteousness i quote the scripture that says it finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing and of quote this is quoting second timothy 4 verse 8 we inherit this crown the crown of righteousness through the righteousness of christ which is what gives us a right to it and without which it cannot be obtained because of because it is it is obtained and possessed in a righteous way and not by force or deceit as earthly crowns sometimes are it is an everlasting crown promised to all who love yahshua and eagerly wait for his return through our enduring 
uh, the discouragement, persecutions, sufferings, or even death, we know assuredly our reward is with Christ, Christ in eternity, as it is said in Philippians 3 verse 20. This crime is not for those who depend upon their own sense of righteousness or, or, or of their own works. This crime, uh, 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 such, a, such, a, such an attitude breeds only arrogance and pride, uh, not a longing, a longing of fervent desire to be with Yahshua. Now the fourth crime, fourth, fourth crime, the crime of glory, crime of glory, it says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. And of course, this is quoting First Peter 5 verse 4. So Peter is addressing the elders. We must not, we must also remember that the crown will be awarded to all those who long for and love the appearing of Christ. This word glory, glory, is an interesting word referring to the very nature of Yahweh and his actions. It entails his great splendor and brightness. Recall Stephen, Stephen, uh, 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 Deacon Stephen, who while being stoned to death was able to look onto the heaven and see the glory 